Imagine a world made of quadrillions upon quadrillions of minuscule particles that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Well, believe it, because this is our very world, and these particles are called atoms. It all began in 440 BC with a Greek philosopher named Democritus. He had a very interesting thought. If he kept cutting an object in half, it would eventually end up with a substance that could no longer be cut. He called this the atom, from the Greek word atomos, which means not able to be divided. Democritus' ideas were a key part of the research in the atom. Around 2,140 years later in the 1700s, a British chemist named John Dalton did research to find out why elements combine at specific proportions. His results led him to come up with his atomic theory, which stated that all substances are made from atoms, atoms are small particles that cannot be created, divided, or destroyed, atoms join with other atoms to make new substances, atoms of the same element are exactly alike, and atoms of different elements are different. Dalton's theory seemed to explain much of what science has studied, however the theory was missing key elements that future scientists would later solve. Fast forward in our 200 years to the year 1897, where the British scientist J.J. Thompson realized that Dalton's theory was flawed. Thompson was experimenting with the cathode ray especially modified two charged plates on both sides. When he discovered that the beam was being pulled towards the positively charged plate, he theorized that there were tiny particles that were negatively charged inside the atom. He called these electrons. He created a model of the electrons scattered randomly mixed within the atom called the plum pudding model. In 1909, Ernest Rutherford, one of Thompson's former students, decided to put his theory to the test. If a beam of positively charged particles was shown upon a thin sheet of matter, then it would pass right through. So, Rutherford designed an experiment with a thin sheet of gold foil in the middle of the experiment and an outer layer to hold the light that passed through. Rutherford then aimed the beam of positively charged particles in a thin sheet of gold foil. The gold was coated with a special substance that had been hit with positive particles. Atoms were blobs of matter particles would pass right through. A majority of the particles did, but a few of the particles were partially and even fully deflected. This result puzzled him, but he soon realized that atoms were mostly made of, of empty space with a dense core in the center and electrons orbiting around. He called the center mass the nucleus. A few years later, there was a scientist named Niels Bohr. He was a former colleague of Rutherford, and he proposed that electrons move indefinite paths around the nucleus. He said that they can change paths, but they cannot be staying in between the paths, like a ladder. You can stand on the steps of a ladder, but you cannot stand in between them. Unfortunately, he was proven wrong. Finally, the modern atomic theory was finished when Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger and German physicist Werner Heisenberg further explained the nature of electrons. They theorized that electrons did not travel in definite paths, like Bohr theorized, but that the exact path cannot be predicted. They theorized that electrons were instead in regions where they were likely to be found, soon to be known as electron clouds or orbitals. They explained that electron clouds exist at certain energy levels and that each electron has a definite energy based on its location around the nucleus. This energy keeps the electron in motion around the nucleus. And thus, the modern atomic theory was complete. A long road of right and wrong and many generations of long and hard work. In the end, all the work has come together to define one important object, the atom. think that atoms do not have any importance in this world.
but one atom's actions can have massive effects. Hundreds of volumes have been written on the atom, so don't be so dense and neglect this chapter's knowledge, because it can be somewhat attracting. This chapter was pretty stable. It didn't have lots of difficult sections or properties. The only difficult part was really the names, and those can be boring. It's also a perfect mixture of fun and learning. You just have to find a good solution. When the homework comes, don't be so negative about it and repel at the sight of it. Charge yourself up and stay happy and don't change your mood. After all, at the nucleus of this lesson, it's just trying to teach you the history of the atom. So stay positive about this presentation because it really matters.